Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Good morning, viewers. Today is Tuesday, 20th day of December 2022. You are welcome to the daily devotion of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. As usual, we are using the daily fountain. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the privilege of life and service. Grant us, O Lord, access into your word that we may realize the fact that this present life will soon end. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our text is taken from the book of Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. And I read. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the wilderness a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rock places a plain. The glory of the Lord will be revealed. And all mankind together will see it, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I say, what shall I cry? All men are like grass. And all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass with us and the flowers fall. Because the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely the people are grass. The grass with us and the flowers fall. May the word of our God stand forever. You who bring good tidings to Zion, go up on a high mountain. You who bring good tidings to Jerusalem, Lift up your voice with a shout. Lift it up. Do not be afraid. Say the towns of Judah, here is your God. See, the sovereign Lord comes with power, and his arm rules for him. See, his reward is with him, and his recompense accompanies him. He turns his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. We are going to consider a topic that says, life we end. Life we end. One is considered alive if he or she is still breathing, if there's an element of breath in him. Look at our verse 6 of our test. It says, a voice said, shout. And I ask, what shall I shout? She says, shout that people are like the grass. Their beauty fades as quickly as the flowers in the field. We are going to lay emphasis on this particular verse as because of our topic that says, life will end. The word shout or cry, as some versions we put it, shows that the matter is critical and very, very serious. Unfortunately, we hardly think about the end of life until we are confronted with a situation where someone's life had ended. No wonder a shout is needed, perhaps to wake us up from our slumber, procrastination, and denials. This life will end somebody, someday, when what we did with it will be judged. May I particularly call attention, attention to some of us who are, are privileged to serve as public officers or public office holders. The way and manner at times we handle our 
opportunity or offices or refuse to leave the office is a clear example that we, this chart is very relevant and apt to know that we ought to know that one day this life will end and to make the best use of every opportunity we have to serve as required. And also, those of us that are doing public service should also know that one day someone may retire from the work. And if you have it in mind, the time we have in our service will be used to address the matters that gave us such opportunity of service. Life will end one day. And even if it's somebody's alive, age may keep creep in and affect somebody's energy and ability to serve. A good example is that of David in 2 Samuel 11 following. We saw David made the error he, for, for his, his love for women, he killed Uriah and took his wife. And the same David in 1 Kings chapter 1, verse 1 to 3, Bible recorded that when David was getting old, as life was expiring, that a young lady that was beautiful by name Abishak, a Shunammite, was arranged for her, for him. And this lady was you know, particularly you know, arranged for him to serve as a blanket to make to keep him warm. And Bible recorded that David never had any intimate relationship with her because. How, how his life was fading away. Jesus made it very clear when he was talking to Peter in John chapter 21 verse 18. He says, I tell you the truth. When you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. I love the way Jesus has put it. He said, it is the truth and nothing but the truth. And the Bible said that when we know the truth, we are saved. When we know the truth, we are set free. So this particular truth should sink in our hearts that even though we are still alive, a time comes to the man's life when he becomes, life becomes almost a burden that he could not exercise himself again. And apart from old age, the issue of retirement is there, and the issue of death is there. And so, the Bible says in the book of Hebrew 9.27, that it's appointed unto man to die, and after death comes judgment. And that is the truth. We have to make the best use of the time we have in life to address the matters that has internal value. So the issue I'm talking about is very familiar, but yet very difficult to accept by reason of the way we live our life. It's not a strange matter that this life will come to an end one day. It's not a strange matter that we shall all end. And we see people dying by our sides, yet it doesn't seem to affect the way we live our lives. It doesn't seem to, to prepare ourselves for the date of our death. No wonder the uh, Ecclesiastes in chapter 7, verse 2, reminds us that it's good to attend where people die so that we learn. The essence of mourning is to learn that one day it will be our turn. And if it must be our turn, we shall know that it's in this life that we have to prepare ourselves for the report we are going to give to God because uh, there will be judgment for everything man has done this earth, whether, whether good or evil. And so, although we know that this life will end, at times it doesn't seem to reflect in the way we live our lives. The great psalmist David was so much concerned that he made his prayer in Psalm 39, four, verse 4 and 5. He prayed this way, he said, Show me, O Lord, my life's end and number of my days. Let me know how fitting is my life. You have made my days a mere hard breath. The span of my years is as nothing before you. Each man's life is but a breath. So we may know that 
life will one day go. But we don't seem to reflect, reflect this knowledge in our life, in our behavior. So that's why David, a man of God's own heart, had to make it a prayer, asking for grace to make an impression in his heart, for God to impress it in his heart, that this life will go one day, so that we address his heart to wisdom. Every living soul must accept this fact and use every opportunity he has to attend to his or her God-given responsibility. The example of the rich fool is very apt. It's recorded in scripture in chapter 12 of Luke from verse 16 that the young man you know, amassed a lot of wealth and was rejoicing over his achievements. And the Bible says that when he was encouraging his heart to begin to rejoice and enjoy his wealth, God spoke to him. Said, God said to him in verse 20, You fool. He was actually called a fool. This very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you, what you have, what you have prepared for yourself? So any person that is living this life without, without being conscious of the fact that one day this life will expire, before the eyes of God, that man is a fool. Maybe a wise person in the eyes of man. Maybe before God, God sees you as a fool. Because you never know that one day you are going to leave all your wealth to whom you don't know how we handle it. Actually, verse 21 of the same chapter, the Bible says that this is how it will be with anyone who stores up things for himself, but is not rich towards God. And I'm brethren, this example should teach us a good lesson that as long as we are in this life, we should not live our lives to say that we have all the, all the days, all the years to do what we want. We must make sure that the, the gift of life God has given to us is invested on things that has eternal value. And being rich towards God is the matter that the Bible is bringing up here. Let me ask you, are you rich towards God? Are you rich towards God? Jesus, in Matthew chapter 6, from verse 16, gave a good direction, direction to this matter. He says, Matthew chapter 6, from verse 19, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moth and rust do not destroy, where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So the Bible has encouraged us to make sure how we use our life in relation to with eternity. So where your heart is, where your word is, where, that is where your heart will also be. So we are encouraged to guard our hearts. Bible says we shall guard our hearts for out of it come the issues of life. We should mind through or how you use the good things of life. And that's the reason why the prophet began to shout so that somebody will say he did not hear that all living should hear it clearly that man is grass. And then if that is the case, man must address himself, must have the mind to use his time and talent and treasure in promoting the kingdom of God. The story of the rich man and Lazarus also added the color. The Bible says that the rich man was actually repentant, but that was after he has died. In death, there's no repentance. It became too late for him, and he began to regret. Don't waste your time, because a time comes when you have taken your last breath. You don't have time to serve God. Even if you repent that time, it will be too late. It is here and now that God expects us to use whatever is available to serve him. And let us 
be assured of this, that no one can serve God except he has received Jesus as his Lord and Savior. A natural man cannot serve God. In the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10, one following, we read about the story of Cornelius, who was a good man. He was very prayerful. He fasted. He gave gifts. But he gave never, never mattered until, out of God's mercy, Peter was sent to him to preach the gospel to him, that he might be saved. So, so that his service will have eternal value. Men and brethren, in this period of Advent, I challenge all and sundry to make room for Jesus in our hearts, to use all we are and all we have in the service of the Master, because life will soon end. This life will soon end, then what we did with it will be judged. It may be worth the time if you are to spend time to reflect on what your life is all about. So that we are usually willing to admit this life will end either by death or by return of Christ. Are you investing your life for Christ or for self? Let us pray. Oh Lord, mercifully compel our hearts to understand the brevity of this life and to invest our time and life on matter of eternal value. All this we pray through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ACNNTV. Visit our website www.acnntv.com.